Hey, this is Sam from Sure. In this video tutorial, we'll pick back up on the equipment profiles topic and talk a little bit more about the parameters that are defining how compatibility is affected in Wireless Workbench 6. In previous videos, we talked about equipment profiles and introduced them as the thing that enable Wireless Workbench to coordinate frequencies for a whole different, um, for a whole number of different systems from Sure and other third parties. In this video, we're going to talk about specifically the parameters that build up these compatibility profiles, or the things listed in the filtering and inner mods tab when you select a particular uh, manufacturer, model, and band. The parameters in the filtering and inner mods tab are the new, uh, what we're displaying here are the numerical elements that inform the frequency calculator uh, how to find compatible frequencies for any of these types of systems. Now, in this case, I've got Sure UR4D G1 selected. It's the same system I have selected in my uh, coordination workspace. And uh, the reason I wanted to talk through this one is it's a system that, uh, if you've used Sure systems before, you're probably familiar with. So let's just go down the line here and talk about what each one of these things mean. This front end filter is really more of a descriptor of the, the physical receiver hardware, how the front end filter works, whether it's tracking around the frequency the system is tuned to or whether it's fixed around the bandwidth of the particular receiver. Uh, in UHFR's case, it happens to be a tracking filter. This filter selectivity gives us a start and an end, which basically says, let's focus on just standard for a second here. Um, this, for, when co coordinating frequencies for UHFR, um, the calculator will go 25 megahertz below the frequency and 25 megahertz above the frequency, in this case since it's a tracking filter, and any frequencies uh, that are a part of the coordination that fall within that range, all of the inner mods as products from those frequencies will be considered as potential interferers uh, when it comes to finding this particular frequency and violating these spacings. Channel spacing basically says frequencies of this type must be at least 325 kilohertz away from other frequencies being coordinated. And then the intermodulation spacings basically say frequencies of this type must be at least this particular distance from intermods of this particular type as they correspond to the different sort of intermod products. So these are basically thresholds for pain or how close, how much personal space frequencies of this type need from these particular types of entities, be it other channels or intermodulation products uh, from uh, systems within this particular range. Now, uh, you'll notice there are three columns here of properties, those listed as more robust, standard, and more frequencies. These are effectively the compatibility profiles that Sure includes as a part of Wireless Workbench, basically giving you the ability to be a little bit more uh, stringent and asking for more robust frequencies that have more space, uh, or a little bit more frequencies with uh, spacings that are more aggressive, that can fit more frequencies in. Uh, but by default, we typically use the standard spacing here. Um, another thing we didn't talk about is this intermod source checkbox. This is effectively a flag that says, does, do frequencies of this type generate intermods in the presence of other intermod generating entities? And by and large, most of these systems uh, all do generate intermods. It's a thing that if you're um, seasoned in the RF coordination game, uh, you're very familiar with. Only in certain cases are there systems that are extremely linear or extremely low power enough where intermod generation isn't really a factor. An example of that would be... Uh, some of our digital wireless systems from Sure that operate in what we call high density mode. Um, ULXD and Axiom Digital are good examples of that. But I don't want to go too much more into detail. Um, if you've got questions, particularly about any of the parameters that I uh, talked about today, uh, I please I ask you to leave a comment down below. Also, the wireless workbench help system that's included in the application um, goes into some good detail about. Uh, specifically what these parameters mean and gives a little bit better explanation. At least that's written in paper if you want to reference it later. So I, I recommend you reference that. But, uh, but otherwise, I hope this tutorial was helpful, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.